Okay, so now for the all important part of like using Unix as an IDE and that's editing. What tools are you using to edit your files in the code directly? And that's usually a text editor. The text editor is the core tool of any programmer, which is why the choice of editor evokes such tongue in cheek zealotry and debate among programmers. Unix is the operating system most strongly linked with two enduring favorites, Emacs and VI, and their modern versions in GNU, Emacs, and Vim, two editors with very different editing philosophies but comparable power. <coughs> Being a Vim heretic myself here, I'll discuss the indispensable features of Vim for programming. Now, this would be NeoVim if it were an updated article. And in particular, the use of shell tools called from within Vim to complement the editor's built-in functionality. Some of the principles discussed here will be applicable to those using Emacs as well, but probably not for underpowered editors like Nano. This will be a very general survey as Vim's tool set for programmers is enormous, and it'll still end up being quite long. I'll focus on the essentials and the things I feel are most helpful and try to provide links to articles with a more comprehensive treatment of the topic. Don't forget that Vim's help has surprised many people new to the editor with its high quality and usefulness. So NeoVim is the more modern implementation that a lot of people prefer now because of its plugin tool tooling that you can use to create your own tool plugins and also create your own commands. Vim has as many of the same options. It's just not using Lua, it's using VimScript rather than other programming sets to create a lot of your custom tooling. Lua basically lets you do it in essence natively in the editor, whereas VimScript is kind of like the command line as well. And then he forgets to mention that Emacs is, they say Emacs is a text editor, but really it's an operating system unto itself. So when you talk about people using Emacs, they're, you're actually talking about someone using their desktop environment and then having a text editor inside of it because Emacs does just about everything and Vim implementations or NeoVim generally focus on text editing and other things to do with text editing generally. So like your IDE, your autocomplete and things like that, that's where Vim shines a lot and Emacs does a lot. Like checking your email and playing Tetris. So file type detection, Vim has built-in settings to adjust its behavior, in particular its syntax highlighting based on the file type being loaded, which it happily detects and generally does a good job at doing so. In particular, this allows you to set an indenting style conformant with the way a particular language is usually written. This should be one of the first things in your vimrc file. If has auto command file indent type plugin on and if. So this basically says our indent type will be based on the file type. Even if you're working with a 16 color terminal, just including the following in your VimRC is not, if not already, syntax on. So this highlights colors or highlights code syntax. Then color schemes, the color schemes with the default 16 color terminal are not pretty, largely by necessity, but they do the job. And for most languages, syntax detection files are available that work very well. There's a tremendous array of color schemes available and it's not hard to tweak them to suit or even to write your own. Using a 256 color terminal or GVim will give you more options. Good syntax highlighting files will show you definite syntax errors with a glaring red background. Line numbering, so you can turn on line numbering, you can set relative numbers so that the line you're on shows the line number you're actually on and then your relative numbers go out from one to as you go up and down each line outside of where you're working. Tag files, Vim works very well with the output from the C tags utility. This allows you to search quickly for all user uses of a particular identifier throughout the project. Or to navigate straight to the declaration of a variable from one of its uses, regardless of whether it's in the same file. 
for C projects and multiple files, this can save huge amounts of otherwise wasted time and is probably Vim's best answer to the similar features in mainstream IDEs. So you've got tags, you've got, I don't know, do you cover autocomplete? We'll see. <clears throat> you can run C tags dash R on the root directory of projects in many popular languages to generate a tags file filled with definitions and locations to identifiers throughout your project. Once a tags file for your project is available, you can search for uses of an appropriate tag for the project like so. Commands TNTP will allow you to iterate through successive uses of the tags elsewhere in the project. <clears throat> tag list window, you could try installing the popular tag list plugin. Tim Pope's unimpaired plugin also contains a couple of useful relevant mappings. We've got a lot of these type of things in NeoVim as well. And people switch over to NeoVim because in a lot of ways it loads faster and more effectively than standard Vim does, it seems. And I've noticed that like uptick of like startup time being slightly quicker. So next is calling external programs. Until 2017, there were three major methods of calling external programs during a session. You had the exclamation point command for issuing commands within the Vim context. And where you wanted to record the output to a buffer, you had the shell to drop to a shell as a subprocess of Vim, and then control Z to suspend Vim and issue commands from the shell that called it. 2017, 8.x includes a, dot, a terminal command to bring up a terminal emulator buffer in a window. So it works better than like other plugin attempts to do it. And then you can run shell commands from there right within your editor window. Lint programs and syntax checkers. So linting in Vim can be very powerful and you've got a lot of options for doing that, particularly in NeoVim now, to where you can just include it in your config, it'll load in, and then you've got linting right then and there when you need it. And there were many plugins for Vim that did the same thing. Checking syntax or compiling with an external program call is one of the calls that's good to make from within the editor using the bang commands. If you were editing a Perl file, you could run this. So you could Perl C percentile, whatever. And then it would check your Perl syntax. The percent symbol is shorthand for the file loaded in the current buffer. Now you'll find a lot of, oh, programs that even like LF has its shorthand stuff. So when referencing like various things, whether it be the current line of code, the whole file or things like that. If you wanted to call this check often, you could perhaps map it as a command or even a key combination in your vimrc. In this case, we define a command Perl lint, which can be called from normal mode within with backslash L. So if we go to, <clears throat> I can, I think I've still got this preserved in my vimrc here. So if we go into here, we, oh, where was it? It's in here somewhere. I stole this from somewhere else. So like here, I've got the print to PDF call being leader F and it just calls print to PDF as a thing. I believe I have a pandoc conversion in here somewhere too. Um, let's see. And yeah, you can even macro like shortcuts to keystrokes. So like this takes leader CO and goes GG, V, capital V, capital G, Y, colon, tab new, and so on. You've got Vim grep. Where did it go? So you're basically mapping Shorter keystrokes to longer keystrokes, pretty much. That's the tagline. Um, that is that. I don't have it in here anymore. I had a pandoc line that would auto do the pandoc mapping. So I'm disappointed. But anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, you can map external commands to certain commands and to a mapping that way. For a lot of languages, there's an even better way to do this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Was it, so print to PDF would be right here. 
So I think, yeah, I think I did this, oh, custom. So <coughs> up here, leader F calls print to PDF, which is a custom function. And down here is a print to PDF function and it execs hard copy to the file name dot ps and then it pipes it into ps to pdf and then percentile dot ps so it can take turn it into a postscript file and then take that postscript file and turn it into a pdf and i'd use this for like printing out notes for like various like talks or whatever that i was doing or working on so that I could print it out for reference otherwise. A lot of languages, there's an even better way to do this though, which allows you to capitalize on Vim's built-in quick win fix window. We can do this by setting an appropriate make prog for the file type, in this case, including module that provides us with output that Vim can use for its quick list and a definition for its two formats. So you got the formatting here. You may need to install this module first via CPAN or the Debian package, this done, you can type make after saving the file to check its syntax and if errors are found, you can open the quick list window with C open to inspect the, the errors. <clears throat> this also works for the output from GCC. Pretty much any other compiler syntax checker that you might want to use that includes file names, line numbers, and error strings in its error output. So you can read output from other commands. You can use to call commands and paste their output directly into the buffer wit. So this is the rbang command directly to the buffer while you're working. So you can do rls to output ls's output into the current o buffer. This doesn't work for this just doesn't just work for commands. Of course, you can simply read in other files this way with just r like public keys or your own custom boilerplate. So if you've got a template file, you can do colon R and then the file path and go from there. Filtering output through other commands. So you can extend this to actually filter text in the buffer through external commands, perhaps selected by range or visual mode and replace it with the commands output. While Vim's visual block mode is great for working with columnar data, it's very often helpful to bust out tools like a column cut, sort, or awk. So awk being a very powerful tool for messing with text streams. For example, you could sort the entire file in reverse by the second column. You could print only the third column of some selected text where the line matches the pattern vim with it. You could arrange keywords from lines 1 to 10 in nice formatted columns like so. Or really any kind of text filter command can be manipulated like this in vim, a simple interoperability feature that expands what the editor can do in any order ma of magnitude. It effectively makes the Vim buffer into a text stream, which is the language that all of these classic tools speak. There's a lot more detail on my shelf from VI Post. So then Vim also has built-in alternatives. Worth noting is that it's got sort and grep, which can be helpful if you're stuck using Vim on Windows, but don't have nearly the adaptability of shell calls. And then there's diffing. Vim has a diffing mode, vimdiff, which allows you to not only view the differences between different versions of a file, but also to resolve conflicts via three-way merge and to replace differences to and fro with commands diff put and diff get for ranges of text. So you can vimdiff file v1 and file v2. <coughs> You've also got built-in version control. You've got, oh, they're so he's using the exclamation point, the bang svn and then the bang git from within vim. So you're calling the command line shell to do stuff. So you add the file name and then you git commit, whatever. Recently, a winner for git functionality with vim has come up with Tim Pope's Fugitive, which I highly recommend to anyone doing git development with vim. So Tim Pope was obviously the like vim pope. And then now NeoVim has Folke, which is basically the pope equivalent for NeoVim. But anyway, part of the reason Vim is thought of as a toy or relic of a lot of programmers used to GUI-based IDEs is it's being seen as just a tool for editing files on servers rather than a very capable editing component for the shell in its own right. Its own built-in features being so composable with external tools on Unix-friendly system makes 
it into a text editing powerhouse that sometimes surprises even experienced users. So kind of like jumping off of that, this is where like sometimes being able to work in the default config of your Vim config can be useful because you learn to use all these tools in tandem with Vim in order to get your work done. So like if you're working on a server, you can take advantage of all these powerful tools that are already on the Linux server and be able to do things very effectively without having to go through all the headache. Yes, you lack all the plugins, but being able to actually know how to do things the hard way and work with these tools inside of Vim is where the power comes from. And I, having used Vim to help with other projects on top of it, just using the macros and like the paste buff, the, yeah, the pasting buffers and so on, I was able to make changes to multiple files for like different source code files to help get a pro get different projects like out a little bit quicker just due to the fact that Vim had these powerful tools built in and then in addition to having the options of the command line tools right at my fingertips. It made so many things much easier to do and quicker because you can jump around the file, you can jump from line one to line 6969 in about like six keystrokes, which is really cool. So you're moving around, you're editing files in a very powerful way, and you're taking advantage, and advantage of the command line that's readily available for you to use all the time. And then you add in plugins for Vim, and it just creates a much more syn synchronized environment that you can take advantage of. If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat, I've got plenty of places in the description, Discord, Gilded, and what have you. Check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one.